Hey, it's Sarah with House Copper, and today we are going to do a tutorial on how to make a lollipop lid. I get a ton of questions and requests for making lids for cookware, and while there are a variety of different lids, some of which I have shown on other videos on, on how to make a lid with an interior rim band, you know, very 17, 1800 style. This is a classic, uh, mostly European, um, lid. So we call them lollipop lids because they look like a lollipop and their construction is actually quite simple. Um, it's just kind of putting together all the pieces that can get tricky. Um, I will be using a blacksmith made handle for this. I am not a blacksmith. I actually work with a blacksmith to make these to my specs. And I also, um, can only order certain thicknesses at this time for um, for the lid um, in terms of the actual copper itself. I try to stick um, under 060 in terms of gauge just because anything really more than that breaks my vintage tools that I can't fix if they break. So I'm very cognizant of taking care of my tools, which is important as well. Um, and I just, I don't have a saw that I feel comfortable with, um, that does a really good job of cutting a thicker circle. Um, I've seen laser cut, um, copper circles in my experience, a water jet cut for copper because of how soft it is results in a cleaner finish, less warping and less waste of copper material. So if you have access to a water cutter to cut your copper circles, that is by far the most ideal way to go but I'm gonna be making a lollipop lid entirely by hand and building it, cutting it, and tinning it in this video. So without further ado, here's how to make a lollipop lid. Your first friend is a ruler. You're gonna want a straight ruler, not, um, not a rubber ruler or a um, cloth like measuring tape. You want something that's gonna give you as straight of a line as possible. So um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure, this is a vintage 1700s piece that I have um, restored and uh, now needs a lid. So um, I tend to do multiple measurements, especially on older pieces, because they're not always 100% round. You don't want a ton of overlay on both sides of, uh, or you know, around both sides of your, your circumference for the lid. So um, I measure a whole bunch of ways. So right now this is looking at like nine and a quarter and I try and kind of get nine and a quarter, lots of the measurements. And you go from the exterior to the exterior, not interior, interior. You're going to the very exterior of your diameter across the top. And you're gonna go off the top, not the bottom for obvious reasons, just because in case there's any type of slack. So this is coming in solidly at nine and a quarter. And my general rule of thumb for making a lollipop lid is that you want about um, an eighth of an inch hanging over the full um, diameter of your pot. So in this case, because it, and then you have to add that to both sides of your, your radius. So in this case, a nine and a quarter diameter for what I'm measuring means that I'm going to cut the circle nine and a half, which will allow for an eighth inch overhang around the entire diameter when I have the finished piece. Um, so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our piece of copper. This is it, it comes with a protective coating. You actually wanna take that off um, before you do your, your measurements. So, um, and then we're gonna cut off the excess and we're gonna cut a nine and a half diameter circle by hand. So here we go. All right, we have taken off um, the coating uh, and enough copper. If you can leave the coating on the part you're not gonna use better so your piece doesn't get scratched up in your shop. Um, and because I'm cutting a nine and a half, inch, um, actually I have to go the other way, dog. Um, if you're cutting a nine and a half inch circle, you want 
your blank to be another quarter of an inch bigger to allow for just excess material. So my blanks, which I know I've covered this before, but I'm just gonna do it again. Um, just in case no one's watched the other videos, um, the blank is gonna be nine and three quarters so that I can cut a nine and a half inch circle. So this is like a 12 by 24, I think. So we're gonna do nine and a three quarters. I always am like freaking out. Is it really? This always looks smaller than, just, just, just. right? I'm not going crazy. Yeah, nine and a quarter. Sorry, it's kind of that whole like measure twice or thrice and cut once. It's an expensive mistake if I cut wrong. Okay. 10, nine and three quarters. Okay. Optical illusion. And this is why, again, I only do so thick because as you could see, something that should have been one quick slice was many. It's not ideal for the stomp shears. So I do have to be cognizant and aware of what thickness my tools can handle at least in this case. Um, now I'll do the other side. Okay. Now we have our blank. And unfortunately, this is too thick to go through the circle cutter, so now, we have to do this entire next part completely by hand with a heavy duty snips. Okay, now um, we need a, a compass and we need a ruler again. And so this piece, as we said, is now nine and three quarters to cut a nine and a half circle. And in a way I think it's maybe good that I'm using all hand tools because you can do this without a lot of the fancy tools at home. You could even, if you didn't have a stomp shears, you could cut this um, piece with heavy duty snips. Um, so you don't, I mean, you probably could try and find the center in this because I kind of am able, you know, we can, we're not, we don't need to find the center. We can kind of gauge based on just kind of estimating as we go. I'm not going to worry about that, but you could, if you wanted, find the center of your blank and put your compass right on it right away. Um, totally up to you. This is why we do the math twice. I clearly, I'm not trying to find half of nine and three quarters, I'm trying to find half of nine and a half. So it's the, the radius that you will mark um, will be half of your finished diameter. So my finished diameter is supposed to be nine and a quarter, uh, nine and a half. So uh, it's four and seven eighths is the diameter of this. And that's what we're going to use to retrace our circle next. There's so much math and I feel bad. Like hopefully this will translate to whatever diameter you end up needing. So if you always have questions, you know, you can send me a note or a message or a comment or whatever, but I hope I'm making sense. All right. Circle time. Now I'm not too worried about the marks I'm making here because um, the handle will um, cover them. I am just hitting all the four edges to make sure, and I triple check, that when I trace this, I won't go off um, my line. All right, looks good. Here we go. For stomp shears or if you don't have a stomp shears back to your heavy duty shears the next thing we want to do after um, tracing out our circle is to cut the excess off so in this case most of it's on our corners um, you're going to want to get as close to the um, circle that you cut primarily because the less material you have to remove while you're doing it by hand the happier and nicer it will be for everybody you and the circle 
Um, so right now I'm just going to carefully start trimming any excess off, like as close to the circle line as possible without obviously hitting the circle line. So that means getting some really tiny little triangles. Um, without, you know, ruining the circle. Because obviously if you take off too much, you're going to have a flat spot on your lollipop lid, which if you only have one, you can hide with your handle. So, I mean, like you can fix your own mistakes sometimes, but you know, especially when you're working with heavier stock, the less mistakes you make, the better, because it's really expensive to just toss, toss it, you know? Next. Um, if you have a glove and want to use it to just save yourself a couple of blisters, I try to just because blisters when you're tinning then kind of suck. But next, you're going to um, cut Okay, we're done. And uh, ideally, if you can get your whole piece in one swoop, like an apple peel, it means that you have probably an incredibly smooth circle without any major burrs that you have to take off. Um, and that's your goal, is to have very few burrs, um, just cause sanding them's a pain. So it's like, save yourself a step, right? So next, I have to find my handle, just right here. So this is the blacksmith made handle that I uh, had made. It is prepped. Um, I drilled out the holes already, um, which you use a drill press for. Um, and now we're going to prep where this is gonna go. Sorry if my heater is annoying. It's like, literally 12 degrees outside right now and I need that heat to kick in um, just so I'm able to be out here without it being horrifically cold. Keeps the, keeps about 45 in here. <laughs> so, 49 degrees, totally fine. All right, now this is where you're gonna definitely wanna do some measuring. And you're gonna wanna find the middle for your piece. So, Knowing I am at nine and a half, and now that I do know that it is nine and seven or four and seven eighths for the center of my circle, I'm going to make sure. or you've done your holes. Um, I like to do cleanup, so I've got my deburr, which I will do on both sides. And then, as is often the case, especially with softer metals, I don't know if you can tell, and you probably can't, but they're not perfectly round, which is just gonna ask for, you know, pain. So I use something that's perfectly round to kind of round out the holes just a little bit and funny like it's enough like it's just enough to make them rounder um to take the rivets so that's what we're gonna do next is rivet the rivets
lovely tin side that actually turned out pretty nice. And um, that's it. It's it's a lollipop. So um, there you go. How to make a lollipop lid. I um, hope you it help. This helps. If you have any questions and comments, please leave them below. Um, find me on Facebook, Instagram, all that's below. Um, everything that I use in this video, the flux, um, what I'm using to wipe the insulation, um, where I get the tin, all of that is listed below. So you don't have to ask, it's there in links, you can click. And um, yeah, you can find me on, uh, you know, uh, at House Copper on Instagram, Facebook, all that jazz. Um, I hope to hear from you and uh, until next time, Thank you for watching.